satin. <laughs> hey guys, it's Suresh. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning into another video with me today. Tomorrow is a big day for Barbie. It's her 59th birthday. Today is a very, very special deboxing for me. I think many of you, if not all of you, have been waiting for this day, along with myself. <laughs> we are finally going to be unboxing the amazing and gorgeous Silkstone Delphine. She's sitting in her box right behind me. I have loved this doll from the moment that I saw her. To me, she represents everything that Barbie and glamour and haute couture and um, beautiful women's wear and beautiful dressing in general is all about. Delphine came out in 2000. She was the first wave of silk stones to ever hit the market. For any silk stone lover, this is a very special doll. If you guys have her, yay. If you don't, I think you're going to want her. So without further ado, let's get her out of the box and take a look. Obviously, I have removed the ribbon before. Are we ready? One, two, <laughs> three. <laughs> Every freaking time I see her, I flip out. I absolutely love, love this beautiful delphinium blue. I think it is one of the most beautiful colors I have ever seen in my life. Oh, I just love the voluminousness. I love the regalness. I love the sheen of the fabric. I love the little faux fur wrap. She is a gold label doll. However, she does not have an addition size um, on her. This is before Mattel started issuing addition sizes for the dolls. Also, you guys, a funny little thing here um, on the front box cover. If you look closely here at the bottom where it says genuine silkstone body, genuine is actually misspelled. I think there was talk around the net that that made the doll even more rare, but uh, I think they actually all have a misspelling on it. So if you do in fact have Delphine, check out the front cover and see how your genuine is spelled. So she comes out just like so, like all of our beloved silk stones do. And then underneath here, we have her beautiful care instructions and limited warranty sheet. Wow, that's a lot longer than what we get these days. A beautiful little booklet, uh, which talks about the Silkstone collection. Um, oh, gorgeous. Oh, love. Beautiful. So this is basically introducing the Silkstone collection to the world. What a darling little booklet. Oh my goodness. And then we have the limited edition Delphine warranty card here. Yep, back in the day when you'd fill out all your information and send it out to them, which they use for market research. And then voila, Certificate of Authenticity Delphine Barbie doll. Wow, it's the same type of Certificate of Authenticity that we saw recently in the Givenchy Barbies. She's fastened in the back with traditional silkstone packaging. Obviously, she sort of started the trend. Cream colored ribbons. And then I see some basting stitches here and there as well. The more I look at this doll, the more I feel like I'm seeing um, inspiration from the 1960 Evening Splendor Barbie. If you guys remember, she had a beautiful um, white stole with her pink satin dress, and that dress also had this kind of gorgeous um, side cascade detail which Delphine has here. Delphine, darling, are you ready to come out of this box? <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god, oh my god, wow. Here is her doll stand in here. It's a gorgeous weighted silkstone base. Um, it is a very, very soft blue to match her gown here, which I love. And then we have her clear saddle portion of the stand there in the box corner. There is tissue paper here inside the bows to keep them in shape. Look at all this fabric. <gasps> you guys, look at this, holy cow. There are definitely some pinholes here on her gown from the basting stitches. So I will have to go ahead and very gently work those out. She does have a hair net. Her hair feels nice and soft. Okay, Whew. here we go. Let's hold our breath while I take this hair net off. Look at this face. Look at the makeup and the hair and this beautiful wrap and the uh, detailing on her gown here. Wow, the craftsmanship is just sublime, huh? I love the contrast of this beautiful icy blue with that pink. Look at her gorgeous hands and the gorgeous jewelry. So, so beautiful. Here she is from the back. Um, I feel like I have to really 
pull away to try to get all of this gown in here but it's going to look so so beautiful once it's all pressed i think i can't wait right out of the box obviously she has lots of box hair going on here she has been sitting in this box for 18 years so i am mad at this girl i am not mad at this and then here are her beautiful little shoes um, they are a gorgeous little strappy evening sandal and then there is her beautiful little hand tag how gorge right this was the original wave of barbie fashion model hand tags this also reminds me a little bit of um gay parisienne we also saw a similar wrap um, with soft pink lining on her as well here she is without the wrap and wow just gorgeous right go robert like way to give it to us from the beginning i mean mm, you guys i opened up that new antica pharmacy to read diffuser back there oh and it smells so good it's like invading my brain right now and i absolutely love it so i'm looking at this gown and obviously there are a number of uh, different references um, that I see from it. I definitely see some Charles James in here, the beautiful draping here across the hip coming up to her waist on the right side and then flaring down into this beautiful, beautiful train. This big massive bow back here, oh my gosh, so beautiful. That's definitely reminiscent of something that Dior would have done in his 1940s and 50s collections. Cristobal Balenciaga did some beautiful gowns that had these big bows and sashes in the back, which I absolutely love so much. This also has a very Marcel Roca feel to it in that the direction of the drape and the way that the drape kind of crosses over the body and falls down. The dress is double-sided taped to her, yep, right here at the bust just as I expected. All right, once the snaps are off, the gown slips off just like so. Ta-da! Here is Delphine Barbie in the buff so that you guys can get a better look at her physique. And what a beautiful silkstone physique it is. Oh my goodness, you guys, this face is really, really just magic, right? I mean, she has the most unique makeup that I don't think I've ever seen on any other silkstone. This double winged eyeliner, oh my God, it's everything. I love it so, so much. And I just love the way that her eyes are painted in. Like it's very different from a lot of the silkstones that I've seen since. I'm obsessed with that gorgeous frosty lip. Yes, girl. By the way, it's the same color that she has on her beautiful little hands there for her manicure. And it's the same color she has there for her pedicure. Her earrings are beautiful, simple little pearls. Um, they do not come out, at least not that I can easily get out, which I think a lot of people have mentioned um, a pair of pliers can gently pull out. I'm not really sure I want to do that. I don't see any sign of green ear just yet, so maybe I'll just make sure to keep an eye on her. Um, but right, there are her earrings. She does have a beautiful little uh, beauty mark as well. Her hair is definitely beautiful. It's a bright blonde. Definitely needs some love and some restyling. She has that little curl that's basted into place with a little stitch, very similar to what we saw in Fashionably Floral a few years ago. She has the left arm straight and right arm bent configuration. Um, there is her gorgeous little bracelet. It's the same kind of faux pearl that her earring is made out of. She does move here at the waist with her classic twist and turn body. Her arms do go up, ta-da. And then right, she does not have pantyhose on. Here are her beautiful little shoes. They are a gorgeous light blue evening sandal. So the shoes definitely need a little bit of coaxing to get out um, because they don't have the slit in the back here. Um, they are a little bit tough to get on and off. However, there they are outside of her feet. Um, and there's her beautiful little foot with her little pedicure. Here is her beautiful little white faux fur wrap. It is absolutely darling. It is very, very soft. Um, and it feels quite lovely. The tailoring and craftsmanship on this is absolutely lovely. You can see that the seams have been folded in so that nothing is exposed. And here... Oh, here is her magical, magical gown, which goes on for days. There are two separate fabrics here. The column gown, um, which uh, is actually like a mermaid silhouette, um, is a beautiful satin. It's quite heavy and lustrous and feels very luxurious. It has the traditional dull backing of most satin fabrics. The sash 
that goes across her waist here and then the big bow is taffeta and it is a beautiful very crisp very heavy taffeta inside the crevices and corners where the two fabrics meet there are beautiful pink flowers there are gorgeous full petaled flowers and you can see here as you get up close that they are um, stitched on with a little bit of white thread there the flowers don't even have a backing on them which is good because if there was a backing it would be pushing into the fabric and doing weird things one two three different sizes i would say um, and then that same size is repeated back here. So a total of six flowers. The right-hand side bow, or I guess left-hand side if you're looking at it from the front, is actually a little bit larger than the other one. And I believe that's to give it a little bit of like a stylized asymmetry, and I'm not mad about that, I love that. If it was completely the same size, it would have just looked kind of weird. You know, the whole point of this is supposed to be that it sits kind of at an angle here and just kind of like slants off the gown and just creates this cascade and pool of beautiful fabric. Let's take a look here at the connection point of the gown and the bow. Gorgeous, okay, very nicely done. The whole gown closes with two silver snaps here, and then we see here just beautiful, beautiful execution. Wow, wow, wow. I love the attention to detail here. The neckline is beautifully rolled down. So from the front, you can't see any sort of construction or stitch lines, which I love. That is definitely the mark of a couture gown. And the bodice portion here is lined in what appears to be like a gorgeous, um, very soft trico um, netting sort of. We can see the two dart lines here, which are finished off quite nicely. The rest of the gown is actually not lined. And I don't necessarily think it needs to be because it's already so thick fabric wise. It would have added a lot of bulk through here. But we can see that the bodice is a separate piece here from the uh, skirt portion. The skirt portion actually has just two panels, um, one large one here and then one here in the front. Here in the back we can see on the gown that there are multiple panels here that have gone into creating this beautiful mermaid silhouette. So we have the front panel here and then we have a side panel here that meets at center back and then an identical panel here on the other side. And that is then connected to this beautiful um, skirt, which has some gathers here and two pleats. So I love that. And that's to kind of create that beautiful train-like effect. Look at the hem of this. This is so, so beautifully done. From the outside, this is what we see. Absolutely lovely. And then here on the inside, we can see that it has been finished off quite nicely with the same color thread. The seams are not pressed down or finished off, and I find that just a wee bit odd um, considering the seriousness and grandeur of this gown. Here is her Barbie tag. Looks a little bit different back then than the Barbie collector tags that we see now, huh? By the way, the bodice is draped from one piece of fabric, so this beautiful pleating detail here that we see is folded over from the same panel. I love that. And then this big taffeta panel that goes across her waist is also one big sheet of fabric. It is gathered here on her side seam and then pleated and pulled over to the right-hand side side seam and just cascades down from there. And I love that both sides of the sash is the actual taffeta fabric, like no lining fabric used. And that is beautiful. Look at the craftsmanship of that, you guys. You can't even see that seam. I absolutely love that. It is turned in and pressed down so beautifully and finished off so nice. The bow is finished off the same way. We see that there are two seams here at the top and the bottom. Um, beautifully turned in and done. The inside of the bow is also the same taffeta as the outside, so that is lovely. So there we have it, you guys. This is the stunning, stunning, absolutely magnificent goddess Delphine Barbie doll from 2000. She was the first um, true glamour doll of the Silkstone collection. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope that you learned something. I also hope that it was worth the wait because let me tell you, it was definitely worth the wait for me. <laughs> Make sure to give the video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Make sure to hit that little bell icon after the subscribe button. That way you guys are notified every Thursday when I upload a new video. Follow me on Instagram. I'm at SureshNY. That's generally where I post all my updates. Until I see you guys again, Barbie and I are headed uptown to the legendary Bergdorf Goodman. We are celebrating Barbie's birthday tonight. She is dressed in her finest. I am dressed and we are ready to party, darling, aren't we? <laughs>
wherever you are in the world, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Big hugs and kisses from me and Barbie here in New York. Mwah! And I'll see you guys again next Thursday for another video, okay? Bye.